And we have breaking news here on Fox 25. There is an active police chase happening right now on 128. You can see Sky Fox over the scene. That's the vehicle in question. And this is 128 North. That car in the breakdown lane has been involved in a police chase with uh, officers. It started in Walpole, came up Route 1 in Dedham. Police, is, uh, we understand, have fired twice at this vehicle uh, in part of the chase. Then the vehicle was able to get its way on to, uh, off from Route 1 in Dedham onto 128 North. And that's what we're seeing right now as Sky Fox continues to follow this vehicle. Uh, Elizabeth Hopkins alongside as well. Elizabeth, we don't know uh, what started this chase. We don't know what the suspect in this car is involved with or the circumstances that led up to this chase. But we do know this is a very active scene right now and it's been going on uh, for the last several minutes as it has gone from Route 1 to uh, 128. You can see traffic now. This looks like it's in the Needham stretch where mm -hmm. they've been working on expanding Route 128 and Highland Avenue there. Uh, so it's going to be very difficult, I would think, for this car to maneuver its way through the traffic. At this point in time, uh, with a vantage point we have, we're not seeing uh, any police giving chase. But again, this has been a very active scene. Shots fired by police at this particular vehicle, which is now in 128. What's interesting is uh, this is a particularly dangerous time to be flying through because you can see the traffic is somewhat thick in this area. And we have seen, I mean, this guy was just flying up 128. We heard se exit 17, 18, and, and the numbers just kept climbing. This is just breaking in the last few moments or so. And now you can see what's interesting is he's actually had to slow down because of the speed of traffic. Now, of course, as our Sky Fox is over the scene there, police are presumably behind and going to positioning themselves in front of this guy as well. But it's really, yeah, Route 9 is coming up here where, where he might be able to try to get off, but you would think police would have a, a pretty easy time given the fact that this is so congested right now and being able to, to uh, shut off. He's got some damage in the vehicle already. We can see uh, on the driver's side, you also see it looks like a bumper hanging off the other side. So he's trying to obviously weave his way through. There we see the police vehicle right behind giving chase at this point. And again, if you're just joining us, we don't know what, what precipitated this, what led up to the chase, but it started in Walpole down Route 1, right up to here in Dedham. And again, a couple of shots were fired uh, he at this vehicle. He is, he's banging into other cars as he tries to uh, work his way to some point uh, of an exit here. And uh, it looks like he could be coming up on the Route 9 exit. You know, the, the other drivers... And it uh, looks like that's what he's turning on to right now. Yeah. Going, look at him going by that dump yep. truck. And that, that police cruiser, the state police, getting off the exit, cutting right through. These, these other drivers not aware at all of, uh, of the circumstance, presumably, that's going on here. You can see, as you said, a little bit of damage. This guy is doing anything he can to get right. away from cops. Look at him. And there's, he's cutting right across and now going the wrong way. Uh, on uh, Route 9, going the wrong direction, incredibly dangerous situation. Not only that, through that construction area as well. We believe that's uh, the Route 9 uh, exit that he got off of there. And now it looks like he's turning back onto 128 to go in the other direction. That could be that could be um, Highland Avenue there by the Muzzy dealerships. Uh, and in fact, I think that's what it is. So it was not quite to Route 9. He got off at the Highland Ave exit. Now he's turning around and trying to go back on 128 in the opposite direction. And hopefully police are stationing themselves uh, in the right place. But this is a guy who will go off the road, go in any direction, go the wrong way, as we just saw there. Again, off the road, around these cars, and just skimming by that, uh, that barrier over there. So, you know, the, uh, if police paying attention to this, Elizabeth, they, they, they do have points where they could try to uh, keep this guy from, from getting off the highway at this mm -hmm. point and blocking exits. Um, he is obviously out of control, very dangerous situation and paying paying no respect to any type of traffic yeah. law, obviously, going the wrong way on uh, Highland Ave there and uh, cutting across the exit. You know, it's, uh, being ab above this vantage point, you would think, okay, we, we've got him, we know where he is, we know where he's heading, but it is very difficult for both police and state police to be maneuvering through that traffic. Uh, we're going to take a look as he gets further down 128 South. We saw him loop around, cut across traffic, knock into other cars as he's trying to escape. The thing that concerns me, too, is that, again, there has been gunfire exchanged, uh, and this is a person who clearly is uh, doing anything he can and not concerned about either his welfare or, or anyone yeah. else's at this we point. We don't know what this, uh, the suspects or suspect, and we don't know how many people were in the car or what was happening, uh, but shots have been fired by police at this vehicle earlier in the chase. That actually happened, I believe, right outside our studios here in Dedham as the vehicle worked We heard way. the sirens going yeah. down the street. And um, they were right across the street from where we are, and the vehicle was able to get back on 128, and now you see it on 128 South. Looks like a... Looks like uh, heading to Great Plain Avenue in uh, that direction would be the next exit.
mm -hmm. that he could uh, possibly get off here. So we'll see what happens. Oh. No, he spun out. And you see he spun out and lost control. And um, now he's uh, Landing right regained on control side. of his vehicle. I'm not sure. And, and it looks like he's uh, trying to get off a great plane app. Uh, I know that we have someone getting ready on the phone. I believe Dan Linsky is going to be joining us, and uh, he can actually join us now. Dan, taking a look at this situation here, uh, we don't know how this started, but this is someone who is uh, very quickly losing control of his vehicle. Oh, and has just stopped. Yeah, the car is uh, the car is not operating. Obviously, it's got severe damage, and uh, I don't know if he's lost one of the tires. He may be driving on the rim. We see smoke coming. The engine now there's not much life left in that vehicle for sure as we just saw that big spin out on 128 and uh, from this vantage point nobody in the passenger seat so mm. there could be someone in the back seat but from what we're looking at right now there's only a, a driver that we can see in this vehicle and a lot of damage to that car as it as it makes its way at a rapid rate of speed down great plain avenue passing vehicles on the wrong side and this has been going on now for at least the last 20 minutes or so Dan Linsky joining us on the phone now. Dan, uh, your, your first blush, your first take on this. A very dangerous situation for all involved. Hopefully law enforcement can get this guy under control. Um, this is, uh, you know, please try and avoid the area. Let law enforcement get in there. Uh, they're going to have to take extreme measures with this guy to be cautious. It, it looks like he's, uh, you know, in a desperate uh, mindset here. And that's a dangerous situation for all involved. We don't want a civilian to get engaged with this guy, and then he's got a hostage-type situation. Well, he's now going through a residential neighborhood, Dan. Dan. I don't know if you can see what's going on, but he's going through a residential neighborhood, which is incredibly dangerous with the speed that he's driving at. Dan, what is the concern? I mean, this, this guy may have to abandon this car fairly quickly here with all the damage that we're seeing here, and he is losing control even on uh, some straightaways. What is the concern? If this guy gets out of that car and bolts, uh, that could very quickly become a, a, a very dangerous situation for all the residents in that area. Am I right? Yeah, absolutely. Residents should stay inside, lock the doors, uh, and, uh, you know, if he gets out of that car, there's going to be a very dangerous potential uh, for a running gun battle. Uh, it's still armed and it's still uh, able to fire shots officers. So uh, this is a, um, uh, we need to get a number of officers in there so they can protect themselves, get the appropriate uh, weapons, uh, and, and hopefully take this guy uh, into custody without any further uh, further altercations there. But this is very dangerous. If you're in that area, just close your doors, lock your doors, lock your windows, uh, tune to the TV, and uh, let law enforcement do their job. Do not get involved. Do not go outside. All right, Dan, he's coming up to a traffic stop here, and he's just uh, completely ignoring that and, and blasting by all the other vehicles. We want you to hang on for a second. We're going to check back in with you. Fox 25's Catherine Prada can give us a little more information, Catherine. This guy's now going up on the sidewalk trying to pass cars. Yeah. And, Catherine, we understand you, you heard the gunshots and have a little bit more information about what has transpired in all of this. Okay, I guess... Uh, Catherine, oh, sorry, Catherine Bertram, who... Uh, Catherine is here now. She's in our studio. And uh, Catherine, you were actually uh, watching all of this as it was unfolding right outside of our studios. As this guy now has come to a stop at a at a, a party city warehouse. There, it looks like. Yeah, Gina, as, as we're waiting to see what happens if he jumps out of that car, you can see the smoke rising from it there. We were watching the beginning of this chase. It entered Dedham from Walpole. Oh, and it appears actually there might be some flames coming out. We see a door opening. That passenger side door there and someone getting out of the car. I'll, I'll send it back to you guys at the desk. Okay, so we, we see the suspect has gotten out of the car and again, carrying, uh, carrying something. something. And um, he is trying now to escape on foot. His car is, uh, he abandoned the car. Now he's, he's trying to get away on foot after a high speed chase with police. Police did fire gunshots at this particular suspect. And this is where the chase has taken us now as he's gone through down 120 in uh, Needham and then doubled back into Dedham. Now he's going into this particular building here, and this is a very, very uh, dangerous situation. Obviously very concerning to police because we don't know if that guy has any weapons on him or what the situation is, but he's now just gone into a building, and uh, now he's come back out. And it looks like what we're looking at here is a, a light-skinned male carrying a black backpack, wearing jeans and a black T-shirt. He just abandoned his car near a warehouse, got out of the vehicle, carrying something, pushed his way through and went into this building, came back out, ran looks through like the parking a, lot. Looks like an apartment complex. Um, we don't know what building that is. And there 
it appears he is again at the door. Yep. If the, and as you're saying, it does appear as an apartment complex, and, and Gene, it may be the case that he can't get past a certain level of mm -hmm. doors without uh, actually living there. But this is a guy who is... Uh, all right, that looks like somebody's outside who's shooting, uh, who just happened to be a, a witness or a bystander there. Now, this is uh, off Dedham Street and VFW Parkway, uh, an apartment there. And uh, obviously, we just heard from Dan Linsky. And if he is still on the phone, Dan, just, just give us a perspective of what people in this building need to be doing right now. Get into the bathroom, lie in your bathtub, wait for law enforcement to open your door. Get away from any windows, do not engage this individual. Let law enforcement do their job. Lock your door, get into your bathroom, lock your bathroom door, and shelter in place away from this guy. An incredibly dangerous situation here. We see people starting to approach the building. There are some people who uh, have come out of the building, not seemingly involved, maybe even unaware of this situation, putting their hands up. Again, police are approaching people who we do not believe to be the man who was driving the car. And they are going inside now. We don't know if this uh, the suspect was able to get into the building or an apartment. If there's a back exit to the building and maybe he took off on foot again, that's something police are investigating. They're going into this building uh, right now. And as we watch this, let's get back to Catherine Bertram. And Catherine, you started to tell us uh, what you were able to witness from right here in our Dedham studio across the street as, as this particular suspect got uh, engaged and police actually started opening fire. Yeah, Gene, Sky Fox was on top of this chase very quickly, and we watched it as it came down the main route here in Dedham, just past our studio. We saw one instance where the car had an initial crash. It appeared her a little bit and stopped in the street. That's when we saw two police officers get out of their vehicle and fire shots. One of the officer firing shots at that car. And what you're seeing right now is this second instance. It's actually there at the median, the on-ramp to 95 North Route 128. You see the car backing up, pinned in by that police SUV. Two officers, one with his gun raised, shooting at the car. The other officer chasing it, realizing that suspect was getting away. And then very quickly, getting back in their SUV to attempt to chase this suspect down again as he headed back onto the interstate. And we saw how dangerous that part of the chase was. Very high speeds weaving in and out of traffic. And again, as Catherine says, this is video from uh, literally just uh, moments ago, really, because this is all broken just in the last, I would say, 30 minutes or so. We are going to continue to take a look at this video, which shows uh, this vehicle, this uh, silver, silver or goldish colored vehicle, uh, that increasingly began to sustain damage as, as whoever was driving it, a man that we later found out was a light-skinned male wearing a dark t-shirt, jeans, carrying a backpack. He was the one apparently behind the wheel of this car racing up 128 north, 95 north, uh, going past exit 17, 18, 19, 20, and uh, at one point looped around, came back southbound. Jim, we saw him driving yeah. in the wrong in the wrong Very direction. Very dangerous. He, he took the wrong way. He weaved his way through a lot of tight traffic, 128 in the Needham stretch, where there's a lot of construction going on, if you've been driving through there at all. Uh, and this was earlier. This is on 128 near High Plain, uh, Great Plain Avenue. You could see uh, he spun out there and really lost control of the car. And uh, this is back over the scene now live that vehicle we saw it sustain most of the damage on that spin out there and the vehicle obviously you could see the tires blown out and this is the vehicle now where it was abandoned on fire so we got a lot of different elements at play here the cars on fire police have gone into that apartment building where the suspect who was driving this vehicle entered we don't know what's going on in the building obviously everybody in there hopefully uh, is okay because we don't know the circumstances uh, in terms of what was going on. They certainly probably are unaware of the situation as well. And there you see that apartment building. It is at the corner of Dedham Street and VFW Parkway. You can see a law enforcement agent outside. But what we saw was this driver go into the building, come back out, try to get in through another door, come back out again, and re-enter the building once more. At that time, uh, apparently there were other people who, who live in that apartment building or had business in that apartment building who came out and were unaware of the situation going on. Uh, we're going to show you in just a moment uh, that driver actually getting out of the car moments ago before it caught fire. And you'll see he's going to be carrying a black backpack and he's going to run past this warehouse and try to make his way through this fence. It seems he might have some familiarity with what, what uh, this particular area. Again, this started in Walpole and worked its way down Route 1 through 
Norwood and then eventually through Dedham here and then back onto 128 through Needham. Then he got off at Great Plain Avenue and now he's this, in this particular area here. Uh, he knew to go through that fence and went through the to the apartment complex. So there's, uh, you know, a lot we don't know and a lot of just speculation. But I want to uh, ask Dan Linsky. Uh, Dan, now that it, it appears anyway, to the best of our understanding, this, this suspect might be in that apartment complex. How are police handling this situation now? Are they going uh, door to door? What, what is their approach? The first uh, thing they're going to do, Gene, is get a uh, perimeter around that building. They're going to try and get any innocent individuals that they can safely out of that area. And then they will go uh, make an assessment as to where this individual is. He uh, will most likely be going door to door, house to house, uh, trying to find him. Uh, but the main concern is to get people to shelter in place um, and uh, make sure they're safe. All right, and we're hearing that they, they, they may have actually apprehended the suspect. We have no confirmation on that right now, but we're, we're waiting to find out in Skyfox over the scene, so hopefully we'll get that shot. And again, to give you some perspective of where this is, this is down a little bit further on, on Route 1 now as this, as this particular driver turned around uh, near the VFW Parkway, live on the uh, left-hand side of the screen. And this was, as uh, Elizabeth, where the damage, heavy damage yeah. sustained as he crashed into that guardrail. And then there. he was able to regain control of this vehicle. We saw him shoot off just as soon as he spun out and went across, uh, you'll see him go across different areas. He'll, he'll go the wrong way, increasingly sustaining damage. Damage. Eventually, he had to abandon that car at that Party City warehouse that we saw, and that car ended up uh, bursting into flames just uh, a short time after he abandoned that uh, that vehicle. Incredibly dangerous things uh, that could have harmed himself. Oh. All right, it looks like we, uh, you know, sorry to interrupt, uh, but here it, it appears that the police have apprehended a suspect. Certainly, it uh, looks similar to the clothing we saw on the person who got out of the vehicle. Um, there is a gentleman in handcuffs being escorted by police, someone in uniform and uh, someone who is in plain clothes. You can see the badge dangling around his neck. So hopefully, uh, this situation has been resolved and that everything is okay. Again, we don't know why he was being chased or any of the circumstances involving it, but you've got local police, uh, you've got state police all involved here, and somebody clearly is in handcuffs and being led to a police vehicle. You see Dedham police there, we know Walpole police, probably Norwood police were involved. Also, as this thing made its way through Needham, uh, very dangerous situation. Luckily, as far as we know, no one was hurt, and, and none of, no innocent folks were hurt in any of the, uh, uh, the high-speed chase. But it appears that police now have their man. And it has to be a huge relief to everybody in that area because this was uh, an, a, a situation that, as you're saying, Gene, brought together many different law enforcement departments, the state police, all to apprehend this man who really had no means of escape. I mean, there were, we're taking a look at that bag that he carried out. If you look closely, you can see a trooper with gloves on reaching through that, that bag. We're certainly curious to know what was in it because it was the one item that he pulled out of that car just moments before it burst into flames. And a very wide uh, crime scene here. The best we know, this started in, in the town of Walpole. And then right down Route 1, which runs through the town of Norwood, a little bit through the town of Westwood, and then here in Dedham. Then he got on to 128 North, drove down 128 North, through a lot of tight traffic, wound up getting off on uh, Highland Avenue and cutting across the median, going the wrong way on that road, turned on to 128 going the opposite direction where we saw him spin out and uh, where his car sustained most of the damage that that's a shot uh, above uh, route one now uh, which is right near the VFW park area and that uh, that car hasn't even been t presumably hasn't even been touched yet but uh, this is another part of the story that they're going to need to approach fairly quickly here yeah and uh, a very wild scene uh, uh, Dan Linsky, I wanted to uh, bring you back in here to talk a little bit more about uh, about what's, you know, how, how do you determine as a, a police officer, th as we talked about, a wide swath of area that was yeah, covered here. Yeah, how do you here. process a scene like this? I, I would imagine there's got to be a, a lot of cooperation coming up between all of those local law enforcements and the state police to try to piece together what exactly happened here. And that's exactly it, Gene. The leadership of all those agencies is going to get together, find out exactly what happened, what started this, who's got the initial jurisdiction, the initial case in this investigation. They will work together. They've got to do a criminal investigation. Absolutely unaware of the situation that was going on now. Another look at that car that's in flames. We're seeing, uh, it seems like explosions happening. And this car is going up uh, like, like, like tinder, essentially, uh, just totally engulfed in flames. Dan, how important is it that they get the flames out and are able to access this car to see what, if any, evidence may be inside? 
the, the first concern is, is public safety, so the firefighters have to make sure that it's safe for anyone to go near that car. Uh, it'd be nice to get any evidence from the car, but uh, the first concern is to get the fire out and, and to make sure there's no uh, no impact to public safety. Uh, if they're going to have plenty of evidence, uh, even with uh, evidence destroyed inside the car, uh, based on the, the nature of the circumstances of what this guy did today. Of course, that, uh, that car very, very close to a uh, Party City warehouse, uh, and you can see some dried brush around it. So this is a situation that, uh, that they're going to need to control. But if you listen in the background, uh, as we're watching, uh, you know, it, what looks like fireworks at some points coming out of this car, you can hear the fire department approaching the scene there. Dan, I want to ask you, too, uh, in terms of protocol, we're not used to seeing this type of thing around here. Usually we see the high-speed chase come from California yeah. or whatever. But in terms of the police pursuit, they didn't, they didn't really chase after this guy. They seemed to keep a little bit of a distance, a buffer zone, if you will. Is that pretty much the way you want to handle things in a case like this? Yeah, if you can, you want to give this guy a way out uh, so that he thinks he can bail out and, and, and stop the running car chase. It's a very dangerous situation for the police officers, for the, uh, for the general public, and for the suspect. So uh, a lot of law enforcement agencies are trying to drop back and not be right on the subject's tail, giving him an opportunity to bail out of the car where they've got opportunity to, uh, to make it safer uh, once once the vehicle stops. So that's definitely a tactic that law enforcement does engage in if, if possible. Uh, it, might be, it might have been helpful too that Skyblocks was up and people were able to see uh, what was going on and, and uh, you know, give him some room to run and, and let him bail out and get him once to get out of the car. We just see, we're just seeing on the right side of your screen that interaction with police where um, their weapons were discharged. They they fired at this this vehicle and he was able to escape. It looked like they were able, they were going to be able to get him because he was surrounded by uh, pine trees. He was surrounded by police, but he was able to uh, to slip away and uh, and take off once again. It really is just incredible video <laughs> to see and and such a wide swath of area where he was able to not only travel but then crashed his car, escaped into an apartment complex where people in side seemed unaware of, of this man trying to access that building, came in and out several times before police were able to uh, finally get into that apartment complex, get him, and then come out. We're seeing uh, right now the firefighters who are about to douse this car that has gone up in flames in the last 15 minutes or so when that car was first well, abandoned. Imagine Elizabeth driving along 128 there on the highway and you're, si and you're you know, sitting in traffic and you're waiting and this car comes in, weaving in and out. No, and you look that, but he was banging into these cars. I mean, it just looked like some sort of monster mash at some point yeah. where he was clipping the tail ends and certain cars moved over, presumably to exchange insurance information, which was not going to happen today. No. And, and obviously the sign of uh, someone who's, as you mentioned, uh, desperate, incredibly desperate with a, with a reckless driving. And, it, and it's really remarkable and miraculous that there was not an incident when this car spit out on 128 here, for yeah. example, that there wasn't... Um, any other cars involved, anybody else got hurt going through the residential neighborhoods at a high rate of speed and complete, driving completely uh, with reckless abandon. It really is remarkable that uh, this thing came to the resolution that it did, but the fact that he got out of that vehicle and then ran into the apartment complex mm -hmm. indicates that this, this guy's really, you know, Sometimes we've seen these things end where someone just waits in the car for the police to arrive or they'll stand outside. Uh, he this, took off. This guy was in, in, had no interest in being part of that. He took off, as you see here, climbing through the fence, went into this apartment complex here in West Roxbury and uh, went into one building, came back out, and mm -hmm. probably couldn't get entrance through yep. the second door, went into another building and... Uh, Either he, he just hid in the lobby or he was able to gain access. We don't know at this point. You know, when we were looking above at the, uh, here's the arrest again on the right side of your screen, but when we were looking above at the car, Gene, you noticed that there was no one in the passenger side of this vehicle. What I saw was in the back, it appeared as though there were some items uh, at the back windshield uh, that were remaining in the car, but there was only one thing that this man took out of the car, and that was a black backpack. The police had that black backpack. They were looking through it, and at one point, uh, you know, tossed it on top of a, a police cruiser. They've got him, they've got that backpack, and, and now you see the fire department being able to put out the fires that engulfed this car uh, very close to a Party City warehouse and uh, very close, as you can see there, to uh, some dried brush. And police are still putting out that fire uh, right now. A very busy uh, intersection there, a very busy stretch of highway uh, at most times of the day. Police chase through five local towns. After several wrecks, the car couldn't take it anymore and burst into flames right after the suspect got out. This morning, he's at court and about to face a judge for the first time. 
Fox 25's Michael Henrik live outside the Walpole Police Station this morning. And Michael, he was just taken away in handcuffs. As we first showed you in our last report about a half hour ago, he was taken out of Walpole Police. And as you'll, as you'll see in just a moment, I did ask him one question. Take a listen to his response. Why'd you run, Michael? Why'd you run? Yeah. I love the public. Police stuff. Not really a direct response. No real answers there. Just venting some frustration. That was Michael LeBlanc, the suspect in that high-speed chase caught by Sky Fox's camera. The chase captured New England's attention live on Fox 25 for nearly 30 minutes before police finally captured the man behind the wheel, 28-year-old Michael LeBlanc. Well, the units, we have uh, Sky Fox over it. He's slowing up the traffic now. With Sky Fox overhead and Fox 25's Bob Ward on the road showing LeBlanc's silver sedan out of control, police say the suspect might have led police on a chase starting with the dragged officer in Walpole to a fiery end in West Roxbury. He looks like he's going to want to cause some damage. He's in a heavily traveled area. All because of a recent criminal spree possibly involving an armed robbery. Walpole's police chief says LeBlanc might have been attempting a suicide by cop. He actually asked the officers um, what he has to do to get shot by the police. And that's a big reason why LeBlanc was on suicide watch here at the police department as he was kept here overnight.